Yes, sir. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you see me? I can see you just fine. Can you see me? Okay. All right. We're good. Mr. Douglas Valentine, who came on last month, we talked about his book, The Phoenix Program, The CIA's Use of Terror in Vietnam. And today, I finished your book, The CIA as Organized Crime, which I can say, with zero hyperbole, was the most unsettling book I have ever read in my life. And I, I say that as a compliment to you as an author and to anyone listening, the proverbial quote, red pill. I feel like I've got, I feel like I have a pretty realistic view of the world after the number of I guess, CIA books I've read. The CIA as organized crime, Mr. Valentine's book, which will be in the description and in the top comment, is the most settling, unsettling, depressing, maddening, mind boggling book I have ever read, and I say that as the biggest compliment as I can to you. That book scared the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, um, uh, most people live in a dream world. Yeah. Okay, I, and I think that we see that playing out more and more all the time. Um, at least here in the United States, where two different realities exist side by side, at least two major different realities exist side by side. And um, uh, you have to, like you said, take some sort of pill to be able to move from one of these realities to the other reality, you know, and um, as we see this bifurcated reality playing out in the United States, it's also pretty um, important to understand that there are multiple sub-realities also occurring at the same time. Um, you know, there's a Muslim reality, a Christian reality, a Protestant reality, a Catholic reality, um, every kind of, you know, religion, a Buddhist reality, a, a, a Hindu reality, which which um, uh, there's a gun owner reality. Yeah. There's a, uh, you know, um, RV owner reality as opposed to a hiker reality. You know, yeah. I mean, you can start subdividing and subdividing until you get down to um, each person, everybody individually in their own reality. You know, I mean, and, and one of the things that we've seen in the last four years is the destruction of families because of these uh, competing realities. Uh, uh, people just, um, I know of many families that have been torn apart as to whether or not they support Trump or they don't sure. support Trump, or whether they're, they're going into this new direction or they're staying in the old direction, or whether they believe in a deep state or they don't. And it's everything has become um, hyper-concentrated and, and and there's no out there's like no way to go out anymore all the information all of a sudden about the world is contained in a box you know and that box is is in everybody's head and and everybody's head is, is is only as big as this box of information that they have and nobody can get out of their own box anymore and and um everything that they do on the internet they do just to reconfirm yes the parameters of their box yeah. and and they they can't the more that they they reconfirm the re, their own their own reality through this echo chamber box that everybody's living in now as an individual the more distant they get from whatever kind of of um, actual empirical scientific reality defines the universe you know it's almost as if i mean i started writing a new book as if the you know um uh, the laws of gravity have been negated yeah you know and everything is now floating wherever it wants to float there's yeah. there's no more uh concrete reality everything has become a representation yeah of what reality, whatever kind of really true reality there is. And people have power within this mass psychosis that we live in to the extent that they can manip manipulate other people's 
definitions of what reality is and it's a free-for-all and, and so there is no there is no um uh hilltop in the, in the center uh there is you know on, on which um uh, the real truth stands there is there is no center point anymore there are just a couple of um of people who are very clever and have formed organizations and, and information networks that compete and all of them basically are selling a product yeah yeah they appeal to a particular demographic whether you're the nation magazine mother jones magazine uh, the intercept or uh, fox news or whatever you have a particular box on a shelf, which is your, the, you know, your group of box yeah. people yeah. that you sell certain commodities to. Yeah. Fox News or the far right people sell ammunition. They sell guns. Mm-hmm. They sell uh, Trump memorabilia. Yeah. You know, I and and people on this on the left sell sell whatever their commodities are. You know, maybe it's a particular kind of. Uh, sandal or a, um, a shirt or, or, or a, a, a different style of clothing yeah. and it all comes down to these competing Marks. realities or what we, you know more like psychosis yeah. that uh every that, that we find ourselves in now and that that is the the status that we're in and this book the cia's um organized crime the intention was that i mean i knew this was all happening and i at least wanted to show the role and the function of the secret services in creating this mass psychosis where people are now manipulated by the sources of information that they ascribe to rather than any kind of real um scientific grounded reality Mm -hmm. i mean i guess that's a um redundancy or real reality but yeah. i don't know what to call you know uh the the, the thing that we've all left behind you know yeah. um right. you can see a reality if you define it is 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 subjective anyway yeah so what everybody you know considers a reality anyway i mean um to the extent that you know there was even a flat earth <laughs> movement going yeah. around you know or people say you know um, they can say anything now about a deep state creating viruses or, or, or the, you know, and, and any kind of conspiracy theory. And conspiracy theories used to be limited to like JFK. Yeah. You know, there was like one conspiracy theory, and that was the JFK conspiracy theory. Yeah. Then around the 1990s, late 18, uh, 1980s, you started getting the black helicopter conspiracy mm-hmm. theory. Where, you know and stuff like that and then it, it all started evolving into like um uh deep state kind of uh, conspiracies and now these these realities that are inside each of our individual minds the box that i was talking about each of which has its own commodities that define itself they they all touch and reach into something that's um, inside our subconscious, and they you know they be, they they're symbolic. They're all uh, you know Carl Jung, mm-hmm. the um, psychologist, talked about you know the um, that people who believed in um, uh, flying saucers for existent for for example, and he was talking about this a hundred years ago that they were simply projecting. Um, things that were inside of their own subconscious out into a, a, a universe, into a, into the world that they could not express otherwise. You know, their own anxieties or fears or um, uh, what they felt to be mysterious about the world that you live in, the things, you know, there's uncertainty all around us. And so psychologically we project those, uh, you know, those feelings of uncertainty into the outer world and we say well there's flying saucers yeah you know and i saw one the other day and yeah. i swear to god but they you know people came out of it and they asked me where tony Poe lived you know or um uh they say there's a deep state you know and they and they and, and then from within their own subconscious 
their own unconscious world, they project the evidence yeah. of the deep state, uh, you know, yeah. out, outside of them. And this is what's happening to almost everybody yeah. in one shape or form or another nowadays. And why it just seems like, a, 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 you know, just a, a ball of confusion. Yeah. Uh, and that's the state we're in. And then I wrote that book, The CIA is Organized Crime, to show how the Secret Services actually contributed to the this this current state that we're in, which uh, uh, a famous French philosopher named Guy Debord um, back in 1967 called the spectacle. Okay. And this was even before um, um, the internet, you know, and he had already seen where where um, people were relating more to representations than to anything, you know, that was real. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and he saw that how it was being commodified and all our, all our subconscious feelings and desires and aspirations were finding in that, in this spectacle representations in the commodity world. Yeah, simulcro. <laughs> you know, yeah. like the flag behind you yeah. has some meaning to you. Sure. It has meaning to other people. Sure. Different meanings. Yeah. You know, but you 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 project that. Yeah. And that, that says something about you and what you feel, but only you and the people who see it and think the way you do yeah. see it for the same thing. You know, yeah. it means yeah. lots of different things. But, yeah. but you can, you know, uh, people, salesmen, and car salesmen festoon their car lots with tiny little American flags. Yeah, you yeah. know, I mean, they string them up all over the, you know, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. It, all over the place, you know, because it means something, you know, like we're good people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you can trust them. Yeah, because you can trust the American flag. Yeah, you know, and then you go in there and they rip you off. <laughs> I mean, so so what does the American flag represent, really? Yeah, you know, well, uh, it, 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 again. In this world that we're in now, it can it means something different to everybody. Sure. And the people that you see who are, uh, you know, you see Trump uh, hugging the American flag and right. saying, "I love the flag and I love America," and that had symbolic meaning to people. But it's really, it really goes back. to the secret services that started to form in the United States um, back at the turn of the last century, going from the 19th century into the 20th century, when the United States started to become a world power. And um, it needed to galvanize these secret forces, secret services in the United States. The FBI was just forming up. Uh, the military was just starting, you know, had fought the Spanish-American War and was expanding overseas and in, in, in league with the industrial state, which, you know, um, in, by that time, America had become the biggest industrial country in the world. Yeah. I mean, it was out producing everybody. Yeah. And uh, it had to find foreign markets, uh, had to start, you know, advancing overseas. And the industrialists, you know, over a hundred years ago, hooked up with the secret services, which were then concentrated in the State Department and the military, to start propagandizing the American public to make them, you know, um, prone to, to accept the uh, this new era of American aggression yeah. around the world yeah. and expansion around the world. And this is when the, the these alter, this alternate reality that we live in begins to be created. And they, they, at this, this is at the same time that John Carl Jung and, and Sigmund Freud are, are coming up with theories of psychology. And the psychologists are being hired by the secret services. They're being hired by the advertising agencies. You know, how do you actually reach out to all these people that we need to sell products to and convince them that, you know, um, we should be expanding overseas? And, and um, it sets up the tension uh, uh, that we see playing out today 
with the uh, America First Trump people. There was always a nativist string, uh, streak in America mm-hmm. that said, no, we don't want to get involved in foreign affairs. Mm-hmm. And there's always been a freewheeling uh, capitalist part of America that wanted to uh, you know, expand overseas. And those things, those two uh, uh, forces in the United States have always been you know, competing with each other. They competed in World War I. Mm-hmm. Uh, when Woodrow Wilson did not want to go commit Americans to um, to fight in Europe, and and when you know the United States waited until the last minute, and then the Yanks went over there and they won the war, and yeah. and, and and all of a sudden now we had expeditionary forces that yeah. were you know were ready to send around the world, and they were very smart about it. You know they waited till the last minute until the, you know the the French and the Germans and the had black they dry, had exhausted yeah. themselves yeah you know? and then they, they and, and, but they still would not join uh, this is just a short history lesson the league of nations which was formed after world war one yeah that the the united states did not join it but uh, organization an organization called the foreign policy association and um um started which was created by industrialists who had interests overseas formed this organization called the Foreign Policy uh, Association and it was opposed to people like the Rockefellers and the Mellons and, and uh, uh, industrialists who had overseas interests and they became like a shadow state department. Yeah. And they had uh, researchers who were anthropologists, sociologists, um, you know, psychologists, uh, industrialists, spread all around the world reporting back to them mm-hmm. at foreign policy association headquarters um uh, about political affairs in every country in the world and they st- started developing a shadow second state department and and um uh compiling all sorts of information and when, by the time world war ii was starting to you know the, the, Breakout. Yeah, uh, it was the foreign policy, the this, this shadow government, sa- shadow state de- department that that really had the people that um, President Roosevelt needed mm-hmm. to form his first intelligence organization, the Office of Strategic Services. Yeah. And these people, the the civilians that he chose to create, you know. Uh, organize and staff out the executive management of this um, uh, this OSF, so, you know, was what it was called, all came from this, the sh- most of them came from the shadow government, or they had been recycled through the State Department itself, like Alan Dulles had been in the State Department for a while, but he was also a member of the Foreign Policy Association, you know, and they, they were overlapping. And anyway, these were people were all in place when World War II started in the United States needed a secret service. It had they had formed the Secret Service over the, you know, ensuing 20, 30 years, and now here it was. And again, they were used to being a shadow government. Yeah. And they knew how shadow governments worked. And they were able to secretly insert themselves into um, uh, nations that were occupied by either the Japanese, like China, or uh, into France and, and Italy, um, insert agents. Not necessarily Americans, but people that they do who they trained from those countries, from France, from Italy, from wherever, and insert them undercover into the countries that were occupied. And then undercover, they would set up um, cover organizations for themselves then they would begin to sabotage and subvert the occupying forces, the Germans or the Japanese and their allies. And then eventually they would hook up with guerrilla forces that they were organizing to start combat operations, mm-hmm. guerrilla operations against these occupying forces. And these are all the skills, creating agent nets, that then get transferred to the CIA yeah. at the yeah. end of World War II. And you have this, this organization that has existed basically in secrecy for 30, 40 years, 
and now it just continues to operate. Yeah. And at every level, it is connected to the publishing industry, the newspaper industry here in the United States, uh, uh, the oil industry, every industry that operates overseas. These are the original people. Mm-hmm. You know, they weren't part of government, and they don't have to be part of government. And yeah. and and yet, everything they do is on behalf of this part of the government that you know Trump and and the American First people refer to as the deep state. Yeah. But actually, there's no difference between those people and Trump, who has all his hotels overseas. <laughs> you know, I mean, he he is the archetypal yeah. agent that the CIA wants to hire. Yeah. I mean, he's a, he's a freelancing, freewheeling capitalist operating overseas. And these are the kind of people that formed the CIA yeah. and formed the OSS. You know, yeah. people that have holdings overseas and in India where he has hotels and stuff like that. So, you know, it's it's an illusion that he creates. And like I said in the beginning, what we have nowadays is not a reality where there actually is a deep state of people <clears throat> in the United States that have foreign interests. Excuse me, I'll take the intro. You're good. You're good. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. That's There's right. not a division. Let me finish the thought. Between the people that have uh, overseas interests and the American foresters. The United States has 800 military bases around the world. It owns the world. Yeah. It is overseas. It's it, The reality is, is that the United States has interests in every country around the world. The CIA has a, has a station in every country around the world. I mean, it's it's operating clandestinely in every country around the world, friend or foe. In friendly nations, it's trying to recruit people in friendly governments to make them conducive to American instituting American policy. You know, maybe we want to have a um, a General Motors or Apple or somebody want, you know, wants to get a franchise there, you know, so they bribe the proper people in their, in their their parliament or whatever, you know, I mean, they're, they're working in um, allied governments and countries as much as in, um, you know, adversarial countries like Iran or something like that, you know, and all the time, this organ, the the CIA in any country that's adversarial is conducting all the secret negotiations between the Trump administration that's just trying to work out arrangements, you know, prisoner swaps or, or, um, you know, how to keep the, the, the war from erupting in Israel and all these, you know, I mean, it's all an illusion. And that was the big illusion that was created by the Secret Services starting 100 years ago that we now find ourselves in, is that there is a difference between the deep state and what we can actually see if we look around, which is, you know, the United States military everywhere around the world. It has the biggest military budget in the world. It is the central it is the, the uh, element of the deep state is, is, is united states military power projected around the world the other part of this you know uh, illusionary deep state is american economic power, policy which is projected all around the world in every possible way you know i mean we trade with china we trade with russia we trade with everybody and and at every step of the way the secret services are trying to get an advantage to to American industry, yeah. and that doesn't change. And Trump, throughout his four years, consistently increased the budget of the CIA, <laughs> increased the budget of the military. At the same time, that you know that he's saying, "No, we're not doing this." You know, it's just the greatest trick. Yeah, it's... every politician pulls is to say, "I'm not going to do that." You know, and then they they do it you know believe me i'm not i would never do this to you and then they do it you know i mean it's it's just lies yeah and we're so now inundated with contradictory information and mythological uh, um, uh, stories about what things really are 
that that everybody's trust are max and and um th so this book the cia is organized crime was just designed to show how um after generations of the cia being in place it's it's retired personnel uh its influence have grown so important in the united states that that there is in fact like this this um uh, uh, underground yeah. criminal yeah. underground yeah. that actually does control and influence uh, our Congress, our judiciary, everything, and 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 in, and in many ways, they do it psychologically. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know, and it, it, and the effects have been put in place and are in place. And and they control us because they know that we're 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 essentially commodities to them. Yeah, we have all become commodified. Yeah, and that's why we load up our lives with all sorts of commodities, and that's the whole object of the of the exercise. Yeah, you know, is is to buy things. Just buy, buy more, buy more, and then you buy and sell. You know, I mean, that's that's what it is, and and throughout all the turmoil, Wall Street. Keeps moving. Yep, just keeps chugging along, right? It's like Smedley Butler, you know, the general that, uh, who's his face? Prescott Bush wanted to use to overthrow FDR in the 1933 business plot. Smedley yeah, Butler's yeah. his uh, his book, the the war is a racket, right? He went from an enlisted man to the highest possible rank in the military, and he said, "War is a racket." You know, I've toppled I've toppled republics in South America for for like dole like fruit i've taken down i've taken down shahs in the middle east for wall street like he goes it's all he goes we're just we are just we're, we're the goon and he was saying this in 33 he was saying basically the same thing you are organized crime he's like we just have the biggest guns we go in and we we just whatever you know wall street wants you want that company you know that you want an oil deal there you want their their rubber trees you want that send us in and we'll just grind them down we'll kill the natives we'll get up set up the trade routes and then we'll just call it heroism well it's gotten totally insane yeah it's gotten and, insane. Um, yeah. you know the cia now and um other nations uh secret services are so good at surveillance yeah you know, they if they want to follow some guy in Mumbai, India, riding a bicycle, they can in two minutes from now they can zero in on him from some satellite, and they can they can determine whether or not he actually has, you know, a packet of hashish yeah. in, in 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 one of the uh, you know some uh, element of his bicycle, yeah. and they can figure it out in five minutes. You know, and this they can do the same thing here to everybody all the time and they've gotten so precise in their ability to surveil <laughs> you know that it's not a question anymore of knowing what's going on it's a question of making people react and respond in ways that they want them to react and respond yes. and so now it's all become you know and and Alex Jones, you know, I mean, he realized it 20 years ago when he started InfoWars. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's yeah. Although, although he's a his his own he his his self admitted uh, mental illness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> his, he projects his own self admitted mental illness into yeah. his message and his own information. You know, he's yeah. not a reliable source of information. Yeah, but, yeah. no, he's but he, he said, is selling. Yeah. He said that himself. If you go to his website, he's selling vitamins. Yeah, and, and, you know, he's selling food for when the when the when the right. civil war breaks out that you can stock in your in your um in your basement. You know, I mean, he has his brand. He has his message. Uh, like a lot of private citizens, he realized it a long time ago. But uh, what I'm saying to you is people have known us for 100 years. Yeah. And people, everybody basically instinctively knows it now. Yeah, They know what's going on now. But they still cling. Yeah. And with, with ever-increasing fierceness yeah. and determination to their own ideas of reality. Because 
as, as the storm of information and misinformation and disinformation swirls around us like a cyclone, the only thing that you have is your own little box. Yeah, hold on. That hold your own on little tight. idea of what reality is. So, it, so the, 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 the swarm of, of misinformation and just makes people more insular and more unwilling to change all the time. So it's just like perfect storm that the bosses use yeah. To one, increase their wealth. One second, Mr. I really have to use the restroom. Mr. Valentine, tell them where you can where they can get your speaking of commodities, tell them where they can get your book. I'll be right back. I have to use the restroom real quick. Okay, well, Tommy deserted me. You can get my books at douglasvalentine.com which is my website on the internet or you can just punch my name into google that's what um, um they google has a list of all my books that come up right away and you can check them all out dead air Um, what you were saying about uh, oh, I guess he went to the restroom too. Okay. Oh, he's back. Um, what you're saying about just yeah, I'll get it. Sure. It's like uh, what you're saying about real quick. What you're saying about clinging is that's what uh, the late rest in peace Ram Dass, Richard Alpert said about the uh, the philosophical, the spiritual phenomenon known as the dark night of the soul, and it happens you know, on your path to enlightenment is the dark night of the soul it's where everything just starts to seem like shit and he goes and in the dark night of the soul is where you see people they cling harder than ever to the beliefs they have because it's like the tides are rising it's a hurricane and you've got a little sandcastle and it's just like hold on to your sandcastle but eventually that too gets sure. ripped away well i happen to have first taken lsd when i was 18 in 1968 and i loved domestic so, so did i um, you know i mean it made me aware of, of sure. you know what i would say is reality sure yeah, you know yeah. not yeah. not what we project from our subconscious onto the world yeah. but you know it's a step through the doors of perception I'll just and our own, yeah. you know that what happens and the cia as well as timothy leary both worked out the process very early in their research. And when you take LSD or um, any other psychedelic drug, and I strongly recommend that everybody take a lot of LSD and uh, psychedelic drugs and, 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 and learn how to go through this process themselves with help. But they, if you need help, some of us never needed any help. I mean, it just came naturally. Yeah. But you go through this process where, um, uh, in the beginning, um, the boundaries between like the furniture in your room and the wall and pictures on the wall start merging together, yeah. and 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 you and, and, and the boundaries between material things. Um, uh, start to merge together, and and not only that, as you become more, uh, um, as the the drug takes hold in your mind, and you're, you you actually begin to see things both microscopically and macroscopically. You can see eventually not only how the everything is is merging together, but you can see on a microscopic level how the how the um, energy in between the molecules is actually moving yeah. in between things. Not yeah. you know, like between your hand and your girlfriend's um, shoulder, sure. or you know, whatever. You just see that there is a energy connection yes. at a at a at a microscopic level, an atomic level between everything, and that this energy connects us all together. And then, and then, as you start to realize that, you also see that this is that that it's a 
mirror image of our connection to the universe. Mm. And that what is what exists microscopically also exists universally. And and that we're also part of the stars. Yeah. And 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 every solar system in the universe and it's all intimately connected and, and then you get to this point where you realize that everything is connected and you lose your ego. Yeah. Ego altogether. Yeah. And this yeah. is the moment that the, the moment of, of tripping on LSD or some other drug, psychedelic drug, that becomes critical. Mm -hmm. And at the moment of ego loss, a lot of people freak out mm -hmm. because their their egos have been uh, so well defined by the society and the culture around them that as an individual, they can't, um, they have no, no, no way to, uh, within their own, uh, being deal with the fact that their their ego is gone, that, yeah. you know, and that they are just part of this. They are just another soul, just... anonymous soul yeah. in the universe. But at the same time, the other people thing. like me realize, well, I'm not just another anonymous soul. I'm God. I'm everything. I am God. I am God everything. Is, yeah. And God and and not only you know that that everything everybody told me is wrong. Yeah. And that I'm divine. I bet, yeah. And I have There's the nothing spark wrong with yeah. the in me. And yeah. and that was because you know my own um, uh, experience as a, as a young person, my own personality. Had had prepared me yeah. for that 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 event. You know, yeah. now a lot of people also get to this moment of ego loss when they see themselves as part of um, something divine, yeah. something spiritual, and then when they come down from the drug. They go back to selling used cars in a lot surrounded by little American flags <laughs> and hustling all their friends because because they say, well, what the hell. You know that is a you know that's a reality that that um, exists and in which I cannot survive on a day to day basis. Mm -hmm. I have to have my feet in this material world. Sure. I have to have a job. I have to work nine to five, and I can't do that yeah. if if I'm high on LSD yes. and I'm experiencing yes. this divinity and it's really hard to carry that knowledge with me into my day-to-day -day activities. And and my wife doesn't believe that shit anyway. You yeah. know, she's a good Catholic and she thinks I'm dealing with the devil and so of her relatives. And if I want to get along with them, you know, I got to put this stuff back on the shelf. Yeah, stop taking but the, the only way, yeah. the only hope for our society, really and truly, is for Putin to do, you know, to, to, to pour LSD into every reservoir in the United States and like, for everybody to start realizing that this is what's going on. I've, and I've been me, saying this for years. We need to... We all realized this back in 1968. And like I'm saying, nothing has changed. Yeah. But it's just that what has changed since 1967, 68, as this guy D. DeBoard explained in his book, the society of the spectacle is that the secret services are not and the propagandists in 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 um, the various religious institutions, patriarchal religious institutions, I should say, the military, uh, commerce have become better and better at psychologically manipulating people so they don't look for the divinity within themselves and within others, and they simply try to define themselves by commodities and the commodities that they own and the commodities that they sell. And I've become better and better at that. You know, you know, even though we all know what what the divine truth is, it's become more and more difficult as an individual to carry that knowledge into your day to day lives, especially as um, as uh, uh, um, um, uh, life becomes easier. Hmm. And, and perpetually comes easier, you know, and you can find satisfaction and ego satisfaction in many, many more ways every day. Mm. You know, a uh, new pair of Nikes. You know, oh man, uh, you know, I mean, don't don't get any dirt on my Nikes, man. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it's whatever it is, you know, yeah. rooting for a football team. Yeah. You know, your whole life, your whole ego can get caught up in rooting for a football team, or, you know, if you live in Boston, rooting for a hockey team you know yeah. i mean it's crazy and and people are not 
they're 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 so attached to these representations that they that that this the sort of secondary ego loss occurs where they don't lose themselves into a divine truth, but they lose themselves into representations <laughs> of what reality should be through those through commodities and social institutions and and, yeah. and and different sorts of rituals and things that we're all put through. Eagle, so, yeah. so, you know, I mean, I think a lot of people understand all this. The big question is, is how, do you understand, how do you carry any kind of divine experience with you on a daily, hourly basis into, the, into a world that's, that's, that's a representation, a misrepresentation, a disinformation of, of, of commodities, you know, and that's, unless, you know, people can find each, everybody individually a way to do that, that we're just going to be at each other's throats forever. Yeah. It's, it's it, the way you can do that is, I think, daily meditation. I've been doing it for 12 years. Go inside for just 15 minutes. I mean, literally, go inside. Close your eyes for 15 minutes. And for me, it's kind of like what you said about, you know, it's like you go experience God and you become every atom in the universe, but then tomorrow you got to go sell used cars. It's kind of the same. I try to keep one foot in the spiritual world because for several years sure. I tried to stay there permanently, smoke pot, LSD. I, you know, but it finally it was like, hey, I have to pay bills. I have to put gas in my car. Like it doesn't yeah, add so up. I, you, you might even have to sell used cars. You might even have to sell used cars. You know, I mean, but that doesn't mean that you can't understand what we're yeah. talking about or participate yes. in, in in what goes on truthfully. Yes. You know. Um, but you gotta be aware, yes. and, and and how do you become aware? You know, other than going through this big, huge initial ego loss. Yeah, well, I think and a lot, a lot, of, not a lot of people are doing that. You know, I mean, like take the Proud Boys. Sure, they share one ego. They share. They, one. if you, to become a Proud Boy, you simply lose your ego into the Proud Boy organization. Okay. You know, now now you all, you, you've lost your ego, but you've found this identity. You know, okay. I mean, you could never get a chick because you were a gooky kind of nationalist kind of guy that no girl wants to associate with you. But now you've got a lot of guy friends and it doesn't really matter. Sure. You know, I mean, you get your face on TV or something sure. like that. Sure, right. It's, you know, yeah. so, so people are finding this ego gratification in a lot of in a lot of ways without yeah. having to meditate now how do you get get all the proud boys to stop and and sit down and start meditating how yeah. you do that yeah so yeah yeah i've thought about that how do you get people to do it i don't so i i tried psychedelics for the first time december 2013 and what's what's today's day that's actually seven years ago tomorrow for the first time i, I did psilocybin and um but for five years prior to that, I meditated. Before I ever did them, I meditated. And after doing them, it was it kind of just furthered meditation. But it definitely completely changed my life. But yeah, so the, the but what you're asking, how do you get people to do that? I've been thinking about that ever since. Yeah, well, I don't think that I don't think there's an answer. I think that we each go on that journey when when we are ready. And I think if it's forced. It will have the opposite effect. Now, I'm with you. I personally think that we should aerosolize some LSD and put it in every major airport in the world. Maybe a time delay. That's what I was just thinking as you were saying that. Yeah, just, what if what if the COVID vaccine is a time delayed LSD trip and it's actually world peace? We all just trip. We all hold hands, make love, dissolve borders, and we just become children of God. Maybe. Well, you know, for me, that's great. Yeah. I, I agree with you. <laughs> And uh, my writing and my poetry are my own individual forms of trying to propagandize the masses to do what we're talking about now. Yeah. You know, I always wanted to be from the time I was, I didn't really understand it, but eight years old is when it started to form in me. I had a mystical experience. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, then of course, by the time I was 18, it took LSD. I realized what I, you know, that I wanted to try to encourage people to do this, and I also realized that, you know, there's a, um, um, this is something that's actually been going on 
for thousands of years. You know, there are people who know and there are people who don't. Yeah. And, and traditionally in literature, the way you try to get people to understand themselves is by telling a good story. Yeah. Okay, it's that simple. Yeah. And if the story rings true, if it's the story of discovery, of self-discovery, then people start can, can start to get an inkling of that this is what they should do. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, unfortunately, at the same time that true poets came to this understanding that you could bring people to this awareness that we're talking about through storytelling. Yeah. The bosses also understood Kill that you change that story ever so slightly. Yeah. And you could then, instead of making people come to a self-awareness, you could change the story subtly so that they, they would worship the military, uh-huh. so that they would worship the upper classes, like Homer. Oh. Homer, Homer's books, The Odyssey and the Iliad. Yeah. I mean, he was a, he was basically a hack working for the for the Greek Empire, and they and and he needed a way. They needed a way to start mytholo- mythologizing empire oh. and the beauty of empire, oh. and they do it in such a way that it was a good story that would people would understand. Well. You know, Achilles should have stayed home with his boyfriend Patroclus and played the lyre yeah. and just had a good time, you know, having sex with hit with his boyfriends and sure. his girlfriends and every once in a while with a demigod. Yeah. And instead, you know, he got all riled off and he went to war. Yeah. But at the end, you know, and so there Homer is telling us in the first book written, Don't go to war. And yet throughout the book he glorifies war and soldier. Yeah. So what you come away with is a, is, is a recruitment ad. Fuck. And it's the same thing. It's the same <laughs> thing with with um, Odysseus. You know, I mean, here's a guy <sighs> who gets lost during the Trojan War and spends the next ten years roaming around the Mediterranean, yeah. conquering all sorts of different peoples. Yeah. Gets... And, and lying and deceiving everybody so he can get home. And, and, and so it's the same thing. And he becomes a, a hero. Odysseus becomes a hero um, um, because of his of ability to deceive people. He's the first CIA agent. Well, and, and, and all the way, he does it. He's the most lovable character in history, you know, in, in literature. And not only that, when he does decide to turn on or turn on tune in and drop out and he goes and hangs out with the sirens they make it sound evil you're gonna stay there for 30 years and have sure, sex sure. and drink what a bad thing right. and one of the one of the most wonderful things that odysseus does <laughs> is when he meets the cyclops yeah the cyclops says to him who are you and he says nobody i'm eagle loss eagle loss yeah, uh, I, mean, well, I, I have no ego. I'm, I, I'm nobody. I'm nobody. And, and 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 if I tell you, this is was the secret knowing this stuff for me being able to infiltrate the CIA. Yeah, get to talk with hundreds of CIA officers, including Kobe. Every time I came to them, I I just imagined myself being Odysseus talking to the Cyclops, I'm, I'm and they would say, "Well, who are you? And why should I talk to you?" And I'd say, "I'm nobody." Yeah, talk to me. It's like what you said. They all thought you were CIA because they were like, "Oh fuck, here's this guy just coming in and chatting with us." And you were like, "You were like by not trying to get their secrets, they told me their secrets." Yes, it was a kind of reverse psychology. You, yeah, you never, I never would have been able to do that. No, if I didn't understand what well, all these things that I have just laid out to you over the last fifty minutes sure. about the power of storytelling about the the power of eagle loss about what people are projecting how people project onto things you know and by my me presenting myself as an eagleless hmm. blank slate all these cia officers could project fill you yes. me, fill their canvas what they what the, from their subconscious the things that they had kept secret but they always wanted to reveal Ah, oh, so you, you came in as a blank canvas, and then they just... Yeah, yeah but I, again, none of this would have happened if I hadn't had a 
mystical experience at the age of eight if I hadn't taken LSD, if I hadn't studied literature, sure. if I hadn't lived in the um, underworld in San Francisco, the criminal underworld, petty underworld, yeah. for a year and learned how to hustle people and what crime was all about. Yeah. If, I, if I didn't know <laughs> about um, uh, uh, good and evil, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and what those things really were, and that ultimately... Uh, this is something that a lot of people on the left and the right in every camp that's at each other's throat is basically misunderstanding is that everybody's a combination of good and bad. Yeah. Yeah. And we tend to think about ourselves in the nicest terms. Yeah. And, and everybody else. And the we worst. We project from all these things that we hide about ourselves, you know, our own aggression. The beast inside of us onto the other, yeah. and and this is something that people knew five thousand years ago, and that people that that people have not been able to transcend, because as I say, the bosses now are smarter than they were when they hired Homer mm. five thousand three thousand years ago. They're much smarter. Yeah. They're much better at manipulating the story yeah. and telling different stories that appeal to people and act as a substitute not to self-discovery but to um, self-disfiguration yes and, it's and 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 the, the the suppression of the self and so you know i mean if we could call it a day that would be you know just the thing that we would both agree on yeah as that people have to get to this point where you actually you know, lose yourself. Yeah. Your, not, but not yourself. I mean, we got to be specific about it. Your ego, yes. which is, you know, what you've been trained to be, yes. as opposed to what you are divinely, which is a, you know, a divine self. It's a spark of the universe. It's, it's, perfect. it's the energy that holds the universe together. And if you can realize that, and you can cling to it through meditation or a joint or, or whatever every once in a while, then you can start going out there and, and preaching not you can not the barrel of a gun yeah you can but um you know um peace yeah you, and you can, love yeah. and kindness and you can bring that you can bring that into this reality just a little bit at a time each person and you just yeah. add more and more and you start diluting the system with with love, with with peace, with this is what I harp on in all my interviews. Every good, time I talk good. about my my experience with LSD, I talk about what literature taught me, because I I would hope that people who are listening might um, uh, see an inkling of a, um, uh, this truth within themselves. And, and just try to cultivate it if they don't already know. And there's certainly a lot of people that do. But uh, uh, you, can't follow, you, know, you can't follow the gun and love at the same time. Yeah, you can't follow it to peace, right? You can't... You can't, you can't use... follow representations of yeah. power. Yeah. You know, guns are representation of ego power. Yeah. You can't go on that path and find this truth that we're talking about. You got to get rid of all those representations of power, you know, self glorification. You know, um, Harley's might be fun to go for a ride on once in a while, but you don't want to join up with 5,000 other Harley riders in the midst of a pandemic and go to surges. You know, I mean, at some point you have to use your head, yeah. you know, and, and really, um, uh, you know, that's that's what we're talking about is using your head. Yeah. Being rational and being reasonable and seeing where the divine truth can lead our country and the world and ourselves and our society and where these representations of individual power are taking us and have taken us. Yeah. And just to start to divest yourself with the one and, and, and invest all your, your energy in the other. Yeah, just, yeah, just start just in the easiest way to start just try it everyone listening 15 minutes a day just go sit on your pillow in your bed just shut the door i like i like to turn on a bedside fan for a little white noise get in touch with yourself and realize that the same thing is going on with everybody else who's meditating around yeah. the world at the same minute and yeah. that 
if you can imagine that connection yep. between yourself when you get to that spot when you meditate and i, I took qigong yeah you know from a chinese master yeah. you know i'm just I'm more of a storyteller than a meditator, you know, but it, there's, the, you know, the, the, the two things work out the same. The same I, you know, yeah. I have it, but I do understand the power of meditation and that yeah. everybody who meditates in that moment when they get there to the core are all one being. Yeah. And that's all, the, all around the world. Everybody who's meditating and gets to that part, gets to that spot. You're all one soul. Yeah. You're all one being. Yeah. And it has nothing to do with any religion nope. or political party or anything. Yeah. You know, and that's where we all want to get. Yeah. It's not. It's not make America great again. It's not riding with Biden. It's you are the center. It's own money, Padme whom. It's just the center yep. of all yep. being, love, knowing, and that's what and it is. Like. like threading buttonhole elliptical universes with each yeah. other yeah and, it's just... and then and then weaving them all together and bringing them all into one tapestry yeah and then you get to that point and it's yeah and then you'll be like mr valentine or myself and then you'll start just ranting about love and lsd and you can you can <laughs> you can join our you can join our cult to bring that into this world but dude that was awesome i would i would love to have you on again but this time instead of Next time, instead of breaking into CIA and everything, I'd like to just, let's, from the get-go, just go in and just kind of freeform talk like this. I thoroughly enjoy talking to you, man. Yeah, the, like I said, the, you know, just this will be the last thing. Okay. The CIA, like Timothy Leary, understands what we're talking about. Yeah. I mean, as they do. There's yeah. not everybody in the CIA. You yeah. know, I mean, there's mesomorph. Yeah. Buckle draggers who, yeah. you know, they just point in a direction, they say wreak havoc, you know, yeah. or whatever. But there's very intelligent people in the CIA who realized what LSD could do. And that, just like Leary, they were there at the moment when you had eagle loss. And Leary was there to say, this is a divine thing that you've discovered and, um, you know, try to hook up with other people or Baba Ram Das. You know, yeah. I mean, they were trying to to connect everybody that way. What the CIA realized was at that moment of ego loss, they could turn somebody into an agent. A, um, yeah, Manchurian candidate, MK they Ultra. They could fill their head with whatever kind of <laughs> propaganda that they wanted. And they could then then manipulate people at that moment, yeah. and and so they were very interested in that LSD because it made people more, you know, it, it made them very vulnerable at that moment, and they could exploit it. And that very simply is what the interest, the CIA's interest was in LSD. Yeah. You know, was 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 manipulating that ego when it comes back out. And, and transfiguring it into something that they could then send off to some place and do something that they wanted to do. Yeah. So, do not underestimate. Don't don't think for a minute this is this you know the CIA or certainly its medical division, psychological sure. branch doesn't understand what we're talking about. Yeah, they are simply interested in power. Yeah. And 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 selling commodities and, yeah. and and controlling markets around the world, whether it's a black market or an open market or whatever, you know, they're they're just trying to control people and markets and um, you know societies and political movements around the world. And for them, LSD was just another tool. Yeah, we'll, we'll make... So beware, you know, be smart, keep yeah. your feet on the ground, but. Yeah but keep your heart in the right place. Yeah, maybe maybe there's an inside, maybe we have an inside man at the CIA who's actually like a Baba Ramdas figure, but he's keeping on the mask of CIA, but he's behind the scenes and he's inserting LSD into the COVID vaccine and he is, he's the ultimate sleeper agent. Yeah, we, well, we, we can hope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, well, thanks okay. for the opportunity. Yes, so. sir. Yes, sir. Send me a link when you got one. We'll do, and uh, yeah, let's definitely let's do another one in January. But we'll just uh, we'll just do it live. We just no topic. We'll just go into it. So that's okay. A, all right, Mr. Valentine. Thank you so much. CIA is organized crime. The link will be in the description in the bio, in the bio, in the top comment. Thank you so much, sir. I'll send you a link when it's up. All right, bye bye. All right, my man. You have a good one.